Hey guys, um, so it is Monday morning at almost 11.30. I got a call from my mom about 30 minutes ago that my dad is being taken to the hospital. Um, yes, I'm driving, I am looking at the road, I'm not looking at my phone, so please do not come after me. I am extremely worried right now, like six of my stomach shaking. That's when my phone's moving. Um, my dad has heart problems and he had a triple bypass. Um, in October of 2018 so it's been a while and he's been keeping up with his cardiologist appointments and everything has been fine but apparently he went across the street today to get a house key from the neighbor their neighbor is from Canada and he's going back to Canada so my parents are going to watch his house for him and I don't know what happened but he had some kind of an episode and the neighbor had to call 911 and he has an extremely low heart rate so he's being taken to the hospital my mom could not sleep last night, so she was still sleeping, and the firefighters actually had to come in and wake her up to let her know what was going on. She had no idea. So my mom called me, and we have been not we have not seen my parents in like two weeks because of all this going on. Um, we've been staying home, and I was like, I'm on my way. I'm putting some clothes on, and I'm coming to you and picking you up and going to take you to the hospital because I don't want her sitting by herself. I don't know if they'll even allow me to stay. I grabbed some masks that I have. They're like the and 90 whatever the masks that are supposed to protect you from the coronavirus i grabbed some disinfecting wipes and i'm on my way to go get my mom so please if you are the praying type please pray for my dad he has been through so much like with heart problems he has had a couple different kinds of cancer gone into remission then the cancers come back like we just cannot catch a break with his health and like we cannot lose him like we cannot lose him my kids will be completely devastated I'm just like sick to my stomach. I'm so worried. So please, if you're the praying type, please say a prayer for my dad. If you're not the praying type, please send good vibes or keep him in your thoughts, whatever. I will try to keep you guys updated. Like I said, I don't know if they're even going to allow me to stay or what, or I have no idea. So I'm on my way to grab my mom and we're going to go straight to the hospital. Thankfully, Chris is working from home so he can stay with the kids. Um, and yeah, I'll let you guys know what is going on. I called my brother because he moved back to Washington um, the beginning of March. So I called him to let him know what was going on. Um, and I need to also call my sister or text my sister, whatever. So yeah, please just keep my family, especially my dad, and your thoughts and prayers and hope that everything's okay. I have no idea what is even going on. So I'll check back in with you guys. Hey guys, so I'm sitting outside of the hospital right now. Um, they decided to take him to a hospital in Gilbert. Um, I'm guessing because maybe it's better equipped. Um, I picked up my mom and got a little more information and they're pretty sure, at least when they took him, that it was a heart attack. Um, and at first they told her like, oh, it's good. We're not taking him with lights and sirens. Like, take your time. We'll, you know, we'll get ready and meet us at the hospital. And then at the end they decided to take him with lights and sirens. So I don't. I don't know. I just, I don't think it's good. Um, trying to not worry sick, but we had to go through the emergency room. I ran in to ask where she's supposed to go. Um, since he's going up to cardiology and they said to come in through the emergency room and they have to obviously screen you and take your temperature. Um, but they only allow one visitor per day. So not even just like one at a time, you can't rotate at all. So they said, do you want to be the visitor or do you want your mom to be the visitor? And I said, I want my mom to be the visitor. So I'm literally just sitting out in the car in the parking lot, um, waiting to hear something. The nurse that was doing like the temperatures and monitoring the door was like, I'm so sorry that you both can't come in, but with everything going on right now. And I'm like, it's not your fault. Like you don't have anything to be sorry for. I just am worried sick about my dad. Like, he has to be okay because my brother and his girlfriend are having a baby. I'm like, he has to be okay so he can get the baby. And he has to be okay because, like, my kids won't be okay if he's not okay. So, I'll keep you guys updated. When I get updates... <laughs> But like literally I'll just sit out here all day if I have to. Like I'm not leaving this hospital. And I just feel really bad that my mom is up there. Like by herself. 
like, you know, and she's trying to be strong, but she was crying. And I just, I just feel like so sick to my stomach right now. And I don't know what else to do, so I just thought I would jump on and update you guys, so. Oh, sorry, I cut out because my brother called me, um. So yeah, I'm, I'll update you guys as soon as I know anything. Um, and hopefully I'll hear some news or at least some updates soon. So I will be back. Hey guys, so the good news is, is that it's not a heart attack. Um, what they have figured out right now is that the top part of his heart and the bottom part of his heart are not beating in sync. Like... The bottom part of his heart it almost sounds like can't keep up with the top part of his heart um, I'm not exactly sure what that means or what they're going to do to treat it um, he's alert he's awake my mom said he was um, talking to her and everything and he is back to resting right now um, they are going to keep him overnight for observation and the ER doctor just had him move to an actual room it's now one almost 155 so um, he's been here for a little while. They're going to keep him overnight for observation. Like I said, the ER doctor was also um, talking with my dad's cardiologist. So that's good that they have been in communication with each other. Um, I don't know what this means, like I said, about his heart not beating in sync. Um, no idea if that means it's like he's going to need a medication or if it'll fix itself or a surgery. Like, I have no idea. So um, I've just been texting back and forth with my mom and then keeping my brother informed. Um, so I will let you guys know what is going on when I get another update. But as of now, he's stable. He's good. He's being kept overnight. So let's hope that he is back to normal soon. Okay, I just wanted to give what will hopefully be a final update for the day. I just got home and pulled into the driveway, so I thought I would hop on really quick before I go inside and chaos ensues with my children and it's loud and crazy and chaotic. Um, so they're keeping him overnight. I believe I already said that in my last update. Um, not sure other than that what's really going on, like other than like I told you guys about the heart, the heart rate not sinking or whatever um, with the top part and the bottom part of his heart. So that's like literally all we know right now. Um, I don't know what kind of test they ran or whatever. My mom came out, they got him his own room. So he was transferred to his room. And because of everything that is going on with the COVID-19, once he is admitted and in a room, he's not allowed any visitors whatsoever. So my mom had to leave. Cause I was like, I don't mind sitting out in the car. Mom Link, stay with him. So she, she had to leave. So he's not allowed for the remainder of his hospital stay any visitors at all. So she left him with his phone, his phone charger, a couple of protein bars that we had packed because my dad, the poor guy hadn't eaten today because all this happened earlier this morning. Um, and I don't know if any of you guys are kind of how I am, but I have a kind of that mindset that everything happens for a reason. Um, my parents are night owls. They weren't always, but after they retired and the kids were out of the house, they started staying up really late. They'll stay up till two, three o'clock in the morning, watching TV, watching movies, and then they sleep in. Sometimes they sleep till 11 o'clock noon. Like they're retired. They earned that. Um, and so normally my dad would have been sleeping when all of this happened, but because he went across the street to get a key from the neighbor so he could watch their house for them. He was with the neighbor when all of this happened and the neighbor was able to call 911. So in a way it was kind of like a blessing in disguise because otherwise he would have been in bed and my mom would have been asleep and no one would have been able to call 911. So I'm just thankful for his neighbors. Um, their neighbor next door is a pastor at a local church and he came out and they said prayers for my dad. I'm a big believer in the power of prayer. Um, and I just appreciate everyone. There's been a lot of people on TikTok. Um, that have reached out to me offering their prayers and love and well wishes and I know I'm just going to thank you guys in advance because my YouTube family or our YouTube family is amazing and I know you guys are going to do the same so thank you guys for all your kind words and your love um, but if I get another update I will update you guys um, my poor brother was an absolute mess um, just worried sick because you know you're all the way in another state and like when normally you'd be able to like drop everything and jump on a plane you can't because of what's going on um, he's in Washington state. So they're the second highest state, I believe with cases of COVID-19. 
it's just not safe for him, you know? So any other time he'd be a two and a half hour flight away. And now he's literally stuck. Like his hands are tied. So my mom took a picture of my dad in the emergency room to send to my brother and myself. And he's smiling. His color looks really good. I guess when they took him to the hospital, he was like completely pale. Um, I don't remember because I've talked to so many people updating family and friends. If I mentioned this or not in a previous update, but, um, it was looking really bad at first because he was awake, but he couldn't talk for most of it. And it was just, they were like, at first they said, it's a good sign. We don't have to do lights and sirens. And then they're like, we need to do lights and sirens. So I'm just thankful. I cannot thank, um, the doctors, the nurses, all of everyone who's out there in the healthcare industry right now, because not only are you having to deal with this pandemic, but you're having to deal with like regular stuff that you know, happens every day anyway. So I'm just so thankful for all of the healthcare workers. You guys are just amazing. And I hope and pray that all of you stay safe and healthy and that your families stay safe and healthy. So once again, I'll let you guys know if I have any more updates. Um, I'm going to go in the house and grab something to eat because I'm absolutely starving. I have not eaten all day other than a protein bar that I had in the parking lot. So I'm going to go in and, um, have some fruit start some laundry and then I'm going to call and check up on my mom. I have some groceries I grabbed with my grocery delivery yesterday for her. So I'm going to see if she wants me to drop them off on her porch. Um, like I said, I had not seen my parents in two weeks. Still obviously haven't seen my dad because he was already on his way to the hospital by the time I got there. Um, so I, I'm able to text him and things, but he's resting right now. So I'm not going to bother him. But, um, now I've seen my mom and it's been two weeks since I've seen her. So, um, I'm hoping that I'm not like an unknown carrier to anything and that I didn't pass it on to her. But anyways, I'm rambling now, so I'm just going to go inside and relax. But thank you guys so much. And as always, I appreciate your love and support. So as soon as I have another update, I will let you guys know. I forgot to mention to you guys, I'm home in the pantry, going to get some stuff to make a little bowl of yogurt. But I forgot to mention that while all this was happening, we were pulling back into my mom's neighborhood so I could drop her back off at home. And the surgery center called for her surgery. My mom has skin cancer um, and she's had it a few times before and always had to get like it just removed in the office. Well, this time they're doing a surgery and she has to see like a plastic surgeon and everything. She's this whole time been making it out to be like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. It's fine. It'll be okay. And I think it's more serious than she's let us on to believe because I was with her when she just got the call. And they moved her surgery up to April 1st. I believe it's either April 1st or April 2nd. I don't know if one, there's two surgeries. I don't know if one's one day, one's the other, or if one's with a plastic surgeon. I don't know. But anyways, they moved her surgery up and they said they're only doing emergency surgeries for now. So hers qualifies as an emergency surgery. So that's just one more thing. My mom was about to cancel her surgery while she was on the phone with the lady. And I was like, no, you're not canceling. This is something you need to have done. I know that you're worried about dad and what's going on with him right now, but you need to take care of yourself so you can take care of dad. I will drive you to surgery. I'm a stay at home mom. I will drive you to surgery right now. We're blessed that Chris is working from home. If worse comes to worse and he's still here, he can watch the kids and I will drive you to surgery. If he's back in the office, his work is amazing with letting him take the day off. He can take the day off, help with the kids or help with dad, whatever. And I will take you to surgery. You're getting this done and you're taking care of it. So she rescheduled the surgery and she's going through with it and having it done. So it's just a lot right now on top of like the COVID-19. Now my dad's health issues, my mom's health issues. Like it's a lot of stress and worry. So I'm just trying to take it one day at a time and just have faith that everything is going to be all right. So we are all in this together, you guys. I know that this is scary, scary times we're in right now, but just think like if we do our part, and have faith everything will be back to normal hopefully sooner rather than later love you guys